Hello, this is Michael Kraut with Idea Dudes, and we're talking about troubleshooting hardware devices and drivers in this video. The unauthorized reproduction or distribution of this copyrighted work is illegal. Criminal copyright infringement, including infringement without monetary gain, is investigated by the FBI and is punishable by up to five years in federal prison and a fine of $250,000. So if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the go go box it's at the bottom of the video. Let's get started. So let's take a look at the module topics. So we're going to look at recovering from the de device disaster. Have you ever installed a device and it just hasn't worked? Do you know what codes or what um, are some of the signs where we can find information about that device driver? How we can start it up if we get that BSOD? That's what we're going to be looking at, recovering from device disaster. We'll also be looking at device manager status codes. Hey, take notes because this is information that you can use in the real world. For example, when a device doesn't work the way that you thought it was going to do. And where can we find this information at? Diagnose and resolve hardware setting issues. Because when we have the hardware and the settings of our servers, that's going to be very important. So diagnosing and resolve server hardware issues. And then finally, diagnose and resolve hardware driver upgrade issues. So this is a very important topic. Uh, because this is how we can make it so that we don't have the headaches that go along with server administration. So recovering from disaster, from uh, device disaster, one of the tools we have is the driver rollback. And in the last video, we talked about driver uh, rollback. And all this is a button that's underneath our device manager or device mangler going into the properties of the device and going into the uh, driver tab. Device is not functioning. Well, we can remove and update the device. One of the things that we need to do, though, is make sure you contact the manufacturer. Because a lot of times what will happen is, is Windows comes out and it just doesn't give enough time for the manufacturers to come up with the correct drivers. So they'll say, ah, oh, take an XP driver and put it in Windows 2003 and it shouldn't have any problem. Well, if you don't know anything about the kernel, the kernel is the heart of the operating system. Each time that a new release is put out, a certain part of the kernel has been updated. So a device that's in XP may not work the same as it would in 2003 because one of the things is is an XP driver may allow access to the hardware or the hardware part of the kernel, the protected part of the kernel, where in uh, Windows 2003, it's not. Then one of the other tools with the last known good configuration. Now, this is a really good utility because what it does is if your computer does not start and get the BSOD, the blue screen of death, and I've been talking about this, it's not a pretty situation. All of a sudden, you're about ready to play this great video game called Halo. And you start it start the uh, video game and all of a sudden you get this big old blue a blue screen with text on it and you look at it and you're like what's up well the blue screen of death actually has some good information what it does is it actually tells you which driver has failed and it creates a, uh, a memory dump and then we can use dump el which is a tool that we can get in the resource kit that allows us to be able to take that information and go through it. Now we can also send this information over to Microsoft and they can help us to troubleshoot it also. But what we can do is say before we started to play Halo, we had a, a, a video card that we installed in the system. And after we installed the system in the system, it had an XP driver. We used the XP driver in a Windows Server 2003 and all of a sudden, it just wouldn't start. So what, what happens? We get the BSOD. Well, what we can do is while the operating system is starting up, we can press F8. This will recover to the point of the last successfully logged on uh, session. And so when we look at this, we'll be looking at it in the demo, but you use regedit and go into the current configuration or 
current con control set. The current control set is actually where this last, go last known good information comes from. So what will happen is, is the operating system starting up, you press F8, that brings us into our uh, optional menu, we press F8, and before the operating, starts up, operating system starts up, when we press F8, we can select the last known good, and that will bring back our system to where it needs to be. And then we got safe mode. Safe mode, also, this, if you, after the last known good doesn't work, then what we can do is we can go into safe mode. The computer does not restart. You get a BSOD. So what we do is press F8, start the OS in limited mode, uninstall the driver. And what we can do is we can roll back the driver. We can also uninstall the device itself. And when we're starting up in regular mode, what it will do is it will detect it and ask for the device driver. Then we also have the recovery console. And the recovery console... This allows us to be able to do things such as fix MBR, fix boot, uh, we can list services. This is a utility that allows us to be able to get into a command line. So it's a command shell. Disable list services for listing of drivers and devices. When, when would you use this? When you get a BSOD, you've tried the last known good, it fails, and safe mode fails. So it's like one of our last steps that we want to use before uh, we call it a day. So let's take a look at the device manager status codes. Okay, if you get an error one, where will we get this? Well, you actually get a pop-up box. You can also get this in the event viewer. The friendly text, the device is not configured correctly. Troubleshooting steps, what you'll do is you use the update driver to update the driver. If you get an error code three, the driver for this device might be corrupted. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and use the update driver to update the driver. Also, we need to check memory because sometimes the memory, if the memory is, uh, we can use the memory diagnostics. If the memory is corrupted, then what will happen is, is the device driver will be, seem to be corrupted also. Then we have error code 6. And error code 6 is another device is using the resources this device needs. So what we can do is we can... Click the troubleshoot button on the journal tab, which will launch the hardware troubleshooter. We can also use msinfo32.exe, and that will get us a listing of all of the devices, all of the memory resources, the IRQs, and so forth, to make sure that we don't have something that should not be sharing. And this will be an example if you've used a, a, a video card that has the sound, the video, TV out, and so forth. They're called all-in-blunder cards, or all-in-wonder. And with those, with those uh, cards, they just have too many resources being used, and they have to share the resources. And this can cause issues. And then we have error code 7. The uh, drivers for this device need to be reinstalled. If they need to be reinstalled, what we do is uninstall the driver. Then we scan the hardware for changes in the device manager, or use the add hardware from the control panel and that will give us the ability of, of going back through and troubleshooting more with this device. Then we have error code 10, device cannot start. Well in this instance what we're going to do is hard, run the hardware update wizard, manually select the device driver. And then error code 12, this device cannot find enough free resources that it can uh, free up. So what can we do? We can look in the resource tab, either disable or remove conflicting devices. Again, we can use msinfo32.exe. We can go through and check to see if there's any devices that we can get rid of or see if we have any sharing conflicts. So what happens when a computer hangs? Well, what happens when we have the Windows starts uh, include the initial phase? So what happens is, is it's going through, it's checking the BIOS, it's checking for uh, where the operating system is located. So it, it's going to look at the boot INI file. Then it have the boot loader fa phase, and that's going to be NT loader. So that's when it's actually going into the operating system, and you start to see Windows starting to come up. Then it goes into the kernel phase, which that's a protected area. So what it does is it loads the system drives, the system drivers, and so forth for the operating system. 
And then you have the logon phase. And the logon phase, that's when we actually go in and we do the control alt delete and it asks for our username and password. Now, if we're in a domain, we're going to select a domain that we want to log into. If we're in a work group, then it's just going to be the actual physical machine. So, solutions for a computer hang. Start the computer by using last known good configuration. Start the computer in safe mode. If that doesn't work, then identify the cause of the startup problem using the event viewer. So we're going to go into safe mode. We're going to go into the event viewer and see if we can find any of those error codes that we talked about. Identify the cause of the startup problem using the system information, which is msinfo32.exe. View the safe mode boot log file, which is another way of going through. Identify the cause of the startup problem using the device manager. Use the system configuration tool. Last known good, like I said, what it does is it's used to recover from problems such as newly added drivers that may be incorrect for your hardware. So what happens is we get the BSOD, we go through, we start the computer up, we press F8, and this will take us through. HK, uh, HK local machine system, current control set, that's where it's located. Safe mode. Windows loads only drivers and computer services that you need. Use safe mode when you have a, uh, to identify and resolve problems that are caused by faulty drivers, programs, or services that start automatically. If a computer starts in safe mode but not in normal mode, there's a conflict the device driver resources may exist. So what we can do is we can investigate this more going through MS uh, info. Uh, 32.exe, also msconfig, which is our configuration utility. We can also check in our event viewer for any signs that uh, could help us to investigate. So what we're doing, again, is we have to become a detective. Event viewer, check the application log, the system log. Malfunctioning drivers will appear in the event logs. Copy the error code and then research it in Google and another search engine. You can go to Microsoft's website and use Bing, but it's not Google. But uh, Google is going to get you a lot more information very quickly. So a lot of us, what we'll do is we'll take the event ID, put it in Google, and we'll find the information. Even Microsoft uses a Google search engine, or did in the very beginning, for going through their Microsoft uh, websites. Now they use uh, Bing. So looking at system information, MS Info 32, what this allows us to do is allows us to be able to see an overview of what's going on with our system, such as IRQs, uh, shared memory access, and so forth. Uh, problem devices we can find in here. Conflict sharing. Tools will help you identify misconfigured devices and device conflicts. So the safe boot log is ntbtlog.txt, which is located under system root, which is going to be a Windows uh, directory. It lists devices and services that load. So when you go in and use safe mode, safe mode is going to create this file that's going to have all these listing of all the devices and services that load. Can open it in Notepad because it is a text file. We can use Notepad to go ahead and open it so we can take a look at it and we can use it to then tr use it to step through and help us to troubleshoot closely and find the, the solution to the problem. You can use this log to identify services that did not load. You can also identify startup problems. The boot INI caution. Only administrators and advanced users should modify this file. What the boot INI does is it actually allows you to be able to give a time of how long you want to wait for the operating system to start and also identifies what is our system partition, what is the system drive, which is the controller card. You can configure a failed RAID 1 of a system in a boot volume. So you can see right here we have the startup and recovery. 
We have the default operating system. When you make changes here, if I change this to 10 seconds, it's going to modify the boot I and I. And you can see that there's the timeout. It's 30 seconds. It matches with the timeout that's up here to time to display the list of operating systems. Then also here we have a default multi disk, R disk, partition, one, Windows. So that what this is saying is controller card one and partition one on the hard drive, that's where the actual operating system is located. And there's the operating system. So if we had multiple operating systems, say we had a dual boot machine and we're running Windows Server 2003 and Windows XP. Well, what would happen is, is it'll give you a list of those operating systems within the boot I and I. And then we can select it based on how many seconds that we're waiting in between each one. Now, the other way that we can make modifications or uh, use for troubleshooting is the Windows Recovery Console. And this is a command line tool. It's used to repair Windows if it does not start properly. Use this when the last known good fails to start the computer. Safe mode fails to fix the problem. Can be used to access the drives on the computer. So we can get access to any drive that we have within the operating system, just like we did in DOS. Enables or disables uh, drivers or services. So we can use listserv. We can also repair the, uh, we can copy files from the installation disk. And we can create a new boot sector and a new master boot record. So we have fixed boot and fixed MBR. Those are just some of the tools that we have in the Windows Recovery Console. And we'll show more of this within our demo. Do you have any questions? Use the question comment box. Thank you for joining us.